Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this is my current art journal, and I've been working on it for three months now, drawing every single day of my daily life and surroundings. So I sketch everything from real life observations instead of using photographs, because I really want a real life connection with the world around me. I use pen and watercolors. And now I will show you my process. Okay, so the first thing for this blank page spread, I'm going to sketch this new jar of instant coffee that I really like. So I draw directly with my permanent waterproof ink pen. So when drawing a container, I always start drawing the lid first and then all of the details. It's quite interesting to have these textures. And then I'm drawing the left hand side of the body and the right hand side. Oops, sometimes I make tiny mistake. I just let go and keep drawing. Drawing the curves of the label using broken lines to show the shiny feel of the glass. Using these choppy broken lines to show the texture of the uh, co dried coffee pieces. And now I'm just adding these label details, simplifying all of the words by just using uh, broken lines. The brand name is more important, so I'm um, drawing that clearly. So all horizontal lines on a uh, cylinder container are bendy, following the surface curve of the cylinder. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So I wetted the uh, surface area first with clear water and adding the lightest tone that I see, yellow ochre, and then wet on wet, brown, leaving some tiny streaks of highlight because the label is plastic. As you can see, there's some shiny spots. And these spots gives more life to the thing that we sketch. And I mix my own black by mixing ultramarine blue and purple together, again leaving, leaving streaks around the edge of the cap. And then painting brown for the inside, magenta for that little label there. Okay, so this is the second layer and I'm adding a more intense brown for the label. Again, saving those highlight spots. And then adding a tiny bit of turquoise blue for the edges of the uh, jar because it's glass. A lot of glass shine with the uh, turquoise tone. Another darker brown tone for the uh, coffee pieces inside and I'm using dotting brush strokes. Now there's more depths because there are two layers to show the uh, three dimension layers of the coffee pieces. Okay, so now I'm painting the second layer for the cap, a more intense blue purple. just to give the, uh, the cap more texture and contrast too. And then painting the shadow. Shadow of the glass is usually very reflective. And mix purple and ultramarine blue for the dark shadow. All right, so the next thing I wanna sketch are the uh, two organic zucchinis from our family friend's garden. So as you can see, there are a million tiny little spots or details on the surfaces. So I'm gonna show you how to simplify. As you can see, these streaks are very important to show the three dimension of these zucchinis. It really gives the, the feel of the surface curve. And I will sketch them in this space right over here.
So I'm starting to draw the smaller zucchini in the front, not being covered by the one on the back. And just take a deep breath, relax, and just focus on the outline. So the general outline is pretty simple. And now I'm ready to draw the general outline of the larger one on the back. It's being covered by the, the one on the front a little bit. The stem is really interesting. It looks really um, organic. I can feel the life of the zucchini. Using broken lines to show the streaks on the surface. Very curvy. These lines really help to suggest the three-dimensional uh, feel of the zucchinis. And now just relax and drawing these large and small spots. Again, we don't have to capture every single spot that's on there. It's not possible. Drawing really quickly, as you can see, trying to capture to see and then draw the ones that's really standing out to me a lot. Using a lot of teeny tiny dots to show my impression of what I see instead of trying to copy what's on there. Same as this smaller one, a lot of broken lines, short and long broken lines. These large and small irregular little circles. And teeny tiny dots. Okay, now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So I wetted the areas first with clear water, as always. The first layer is always the lightest tone. This kind of uh, a mix of light green and the medium yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre. Every single zucchini has um, a unique tone, different kind of yellow green. And after the first layer is dried up a bit, I'm ready to paint on the second layer. Kind of wet on dry. Viridian green mix in with a little bit of a yellow ochre, depending on the uh, color that you see. The yellow green might be different for each little zucchini. I'm painting very loosely, not worrying about really painting around those tiny light spots because it's really it's not that possible. The more loose that we paint, I think the more lively our sketches are. And don't worry about creating smooth surfaces and just try to be expressive using brush strokes and don't try to um, smoothen them out. Brush strokes are really helpful to bring our sketches more alive. So now this is another deeper layer for the stamps. And as you can see, I'm leaving tiny streaks from the previous layer. So these stamps look more 3D instead of flat. Okay, so now I'm adding this darker tone of green for these darker stripes on the surface. Mixing in a little bit more water for less stronger, smaller stripes. So there's some, a variety of gradients happening on the surface. These are less strong. It's trying to create like a smooth transition. Okay, so the same painting technique for this smaller zucchini. So I'm pressing my water brush a little bit. So there's a little bit of water coming out to make my brush strokes more smooth and soft. And this is the effect that I want. And adding an even darker layer around the bottoms because the bottoms 
are away from the light source. And I do this when the previous layer is pretty much dried because I still want some traces of brush marks. Okay, so now I decided to paint a background platform. And after that, I'm painting the shadows of these two zucchinis with a mix of ultramarine blue and purple. The shadows even darker around the bottoms. And because I'm putting these two zucchinis on a glassy surface, the shadow can be a bit tricky because it's also a reflection. And here's the look of my finished sketch. And I didn't really want to make the shadows way too dark or is that competing with the, uh, the main subject. Okay, so I just had a cup of this Tazzle English breakfast tea and it tastes really good. I'm going to sketch it in my art journal. Um, I think nothing is too simple or too boring or too ugly to be sketched in our art journal. As long as they're meaningful to us, um, they're worth to be sketched, to be recorded as part of our lives. So as always, I'm just doing the general outlines before adding further details. Using broken lines, hatching marks to give this flat 3D dimension of the tea bag. These little tea pieces inside, gentle broken lines to show the organic form inside. These details are kind of similar to the uh, surface of the zucchini, so there's a kind of like an echoing. Okay, so this is the first layer, and now I'm adding the second layer after the wash of yellow ochre and orange. Now I'm adding a mix of brown and orange for this second layer. As you can see, I'm leaving some tiny streaks white. So it looks more um, dynamic and lively. Again, using brush strokes to show the uh, tea leaves inside. And then just adding another more intense dark brown, just to give more um, depth for the layers of uh, chopped tea leaves inside the bag. And now I am just painting this splash of pink on the tea label. Shadow from the yarn. And finally painting the little shadows. A reflective watery brown and then mix of ultramarine blue and a little bit purple. And the yarn too, that's it. And here's the look of my art journal spread so far. Let's see what I will sketch next. So now we're having another heat wave here in Vancouver. In the early evening, I'm having a cup of um, mint tea before dinner. It's really refreshing. And I will sketch it in my art journal. And this space right here looks great for this cup of tea. So my um, teacup is kind of an unusual shape. It's the uh, irregular shape of a prism instead of a, a cylinder. So the opening is a square, a round square shape. So when drawing a cup or other uh, vessels, don't forget to draw the thickness of the rim and also the handle. Now just adding these surface decorations Okay, so now I'm just painting on yellow ochre for this cer ceramic teacup. This part is not as important as the part of the uh, shiny tea. The first layer for the tea, I just put on red-brown and then keep painting 
this black part of the teacup with mix of um, ultramarine blue and purple and a bit of green. So that's my own black with more life. A bit of darker brown under the first layer of yellow ochre. Okay, so this second layer for the tea is really important. The blending with the first layer and leaving the mid middle parts bright and the edges shiny. Okay, and I'm leaving that and not overworking on the tea and just doing some final polish for the teacup just to make it look more dynamic. And I'm painting a fresh green platform because it suggests the, uh, the flavor of mint and then quickly painting the shadow. That's it. And here is the finished look of my sketch. All right, so the next thing I wanna sketch are these peaches. So I have a page gap for this set of four peaches. So I decided to draw the two peaches on the uh, right hand side page and the other two on the left hand side page. So, so these four peaches are not really being cut off too much and yet they're still connected together. I like connecting things together between two pages in my art journal because that adds more unity. So as you can see, I'm just drawing the outlines and a little bit of uh, inner details with some broken lines. And I just finished drawing because the charm of these peaches are not lines, but the uh, blend of colors. So the first layer is a mix of yellow ochre and orange. Very light, mixed in with a lot of water. And second layer, wet on wet, some magenta. Mix it with a little bit orange and using some thin strokes to show the streaks on the skin of the peaches. I'm actually constantly changing my shade of um, magenta orange because every peach had a different tone of uh, red orange. Third layer, an even stronger tone of magenta and also more detailed brush strokes. So I'm painting this layer as the previous layer is dried up a bit so my brush strokes are not merging with the previous layer. They're still pretty sharp and easy to control instead of um, wet on wet. This is almost wet on dry. And I'm also um, squeezing my water brush a little bit so the sharp brush strokes can blend with the previous layer a bit. Not all of these streaks look very sharp. Okay, and another layer of magenta mixing with a little bit purple. And the even darker purple around the, uh, the folds. And also around the bottom, the parts being covered by another peach using kind of dry brushing marks to show the fuzzy skin of the peaches. And I decided to paint a blue platform and now painting the shadows with a mix of um, ultramarine blue and purple S super quickly and loosely. Okay, so here's the look of my art journal spread so far. Um, I still have a little bit of space on top to fill, but I think so far is enough for this video. 
I will show you what I'm going to do with the space up here in my next video. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates and also follow me on Instagram. See you very soon next time.